Hey people, welcome to the channel. It's about 5.45 a.m. I'm getting ready for the next test that I'm gonna do. This one's gonna be really interesting. I'm gonna take kind of four crossover shoes, four commuter shoes, four shoes that can handle a bit of tarmac and a bit of trail. I'm gonna take them out. I'm gonna do an hour in each, hopefully, if I've got time, and we'll see how they cope. First shoe I've got is the North Face Vective Endurance 2. The second shoe I've got is the Hoka Speed Goat 5. Then I've got the brand new Hoka Tecton X with a carbon plate. And finally, I've got the Innovate Park Claw 280 with that kind of G5 foam in it to see how these get on. Now, why am I doing this? Well, in about 40 days, I'm gonna try and run the Danube from sea to source. The kind of terrain I'm expecting to encounter is gonna be similar to where I am here in the New Forest in the UK. So quite hard compacted trails, a bit of roads, and I'm really on the lookout for which shoe I'm gonna take. So I'm gonna see if any of these shoes can hold up. I'll probably cover roughly a marathon distance today in these four shoes provided I have time, and it's gonna help me decide if any of these shoes should be on the list for that run. One thing I hadn't factored in out there, it's early, it's also raining. It was really nice and sunny yesterday, so when I sort of devised this plan to go out and do this, I was expecting to be running to a beautiful sunrise uh, in excellent conditions. It's not, it's raining, but you know, you can only get wet once, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick these in the backpacks that I will be carrying along the Danube, so I have four shoes in a 25 litre pack. I'll take that, some food, some other bits and bobs and I'll get out there and give this a go. As I'm running, I'm gonna be reviewing them live, uh, recording my thoughts as I change the shoes pretty much every hour. So anyway, I better get this coffee down me and then get out there and get on with it. So I'm out the door, but before we get into the test proper, one thing I wanted to ask you guys to do, if you like the channel, you enjoy this content, hit subscribe, hit like, comment in the comments below. All of these things really help support the channel, helps me make more videos like this. I'd love to have you along for all the videos that I've got coming up, but for now we've got kind of about three and a half, four hours of running ahead of us, four different shoes into the forest, like this you can see behind me. Different kind of trails, so let's get on with it. So I'm five miles and just short of an hour in to the first stint in the Hoka Speedgoat 5. Here's a quick summary of these shoes. They are brilliant. I love them. They are soft, but not too soft. You know, they can cope with the tarmac. They cope with compacted trails. They give you a nice roll. The underfoot feel it isn't too squishy for me. It's not deadening my stride. I feel like I can just get into a nice rhythm in these shoes. And the overall comfort on the foot is disappearing. They're sort of light enough, protective enough. Yeah, I, I do think these shoes have a lot for what I need them to do. You know, it's going to be trails like this that I'm running or then crossing over onto roads along the Danube. But these are just a happy shoe to run in. I think if I was thinking even about going to do a mountain ultra, I'd love to test them on sort of slippy, steep downhills. But, it's a bit, but for everything else you encounter on those kind of runs, I think these shoes have a lot going for them. These are among my favourites. Next up, I'm going to be going into the Tecton X, which would be an interesting comparison to Hoka shoes. Uh, we're just going to pull up up here and change into them and then do the next hour in those shoes. So first time I've put these shoes on, I mean, I've also done that thing, which I quite like to do sometimes, where I haven't really read up about the technology of the shoe. I just wanted to see how they would run. You know, sometimes it's nice just to see if you like a shoe before you know anything about the technology, judge it for how it feels on the foot. And that's what I'm doing here. So three miles in, same mixture of terrain, a little bit of tarmac, lots of compacted kind of gravel, uh, nothing wet and slippy yet. But instantly, when I stepped out the first 100 meters in the shoe, compared to the Speed Goat 5, there's a noticeable extra spring underfoot. I think you can definitely feel the combination of the foam and the carbon plate working here. It feels more bouncy. I guess the flip side to that, though, is something that, you know, I'm always sort of wondering about the carbon shoes, is that there is a bit more compression in the foam. So I feel like when I'm getting a bit heavier in my steps, a bit, you know, a bit more ragged in my form. I feel like I sink a bit more. It's not necessarily that kind of spring 
from when you're running a bit kind of in better form but they do feel noticeably lighter and bouncier I don't think the on the foot feel is quite as comfortable in terms of the way the kind of uppers and the sort of shaping feels and I'm not sure I'll have to check this when I get back but I also feel like there's maybe a slightly wider base at the front than on the Speed Goat 5 which I think just makes them feel I guess a little bit less overall agile but I would imagine if that's the case that's there to add a little bit of extra stability to what's going on with the carbon plate and the foam although I don't feel like they are as stable as a Speed Goat there's definitely a little bit more wobble underfoot even on this kind of not particularly kind of st sort of tricky terrain but yeah I like them so far you know so far so good I think in these shoes it's interesting I don't know whether I want to run every day for 70 days in them but we'll see got another couple of miles to go and then I'll do a quick wrap of those shoes after that when I'm changing into the next ones but yeah keep it on keep it on So I'm 10 miles and two hours in. I've just changed out of the Hoka Tecton X. My thoughts on those, so interesting shoes, really interesting shoes. And the comparison with the Speed Goat 5, which I ran the first hour before that, is an interesting one. They're definitely, I think, more springy. There's definitely more kind of compression of that foam. And yeah, they do feel a bit more poppy, actually. They got, initially when I started to run in them, the temptation was to run a bit faster. I feel like they were making me sort of move a bit quicker. I'm obviously at the moment, I'm trying to keep my heart rate sort of down. Um, trying to keep this kind of low and slow for this run. So I had to sort of rein it in a bit. But they do feel a bit racier shoes. I do think that you're gonna get a bit more spring and a bit more response from those. My initial thoughts from the first sort of hour though was they weren't quite as comfortable on the foot as the Speed Goat 5. And actually the overall ride, I think I preferred the ride of the fives to the Tecton. And I think particularly if I'm thinking about doing the Danube, you know, five, six hours a day in a shoe, I think actually I just want the more natural feel of the Speed Goat. I think I preferred the overall stability of the Speed Goat's base. Um, it just felt like there's a little bit less wobble. It's not huge, I don't think, but it did feel a little bit more stable. And yeah, I think overall the sort of foot comfort I think was there more with the Speed Goat 5. So, so far Speed Goat 5 in the lead. Although those Tectons I think are really interesting shoes. I did enjoy running in them. I think they actually, you know, felt nice and nimble. And again, good on the tarmac and on the sort of compacted trails. I've done a bit of this kind of squelchy stuff in them as well. So yeah, that's good. I am now in the North Face Vective Endurance 2 for the next kind of hour, maybe 45 minutes. A shoe that's supposed to be giving you a little bit more spring, a little bit more response in a trail shoe. So let's go and get this hour done and then we'll finish up in Innovate Park Claw 280. So I'm coming up to three miles now into the North Face Vective Endurance 2. And yet again, you know, it's a really interesting comparison. Slipping out of those Hoka Tecton X, which were quite kind of springy, a lot more compression of the foam. These Endurance 2 are definitely a little bit firmer in the foam. Uh, it's the same, to me, it feels like there's sort of roughly about the same amount of room in the toe box. In the Endurance 2, I do get a slight bit of rubbing on the outer edge of my little pinky toe on both shoes. They're not cramped, but it's just where the curve of the shoe runs up around that kind of outer edge. And that is something I think, again, looking at long, going long hours, day after day after day, would be a bit of a concern for me. Underfoot, what's going on here? Definitely much firmer. I've run on a lot kind of softer terrain back there even, but you can feel there's a firmness in the shoe compared to the Tecton X. There's a bit more like the Speed Goat, I think, in terms of that. Although I think, thinking back, I feel like I've got the Speed Goat a little bit softer underfoot. Now, the other interesting thing is, I think these Endurus sort of have more, like it's a rocker shape of the Endurus. A lot more of that midsole, the way that I'm landing, probably a kind of sort of midfoot land at the moment, the way I'm running. I can feel a lot more of that foam under the kind of middle of my foot. Uh, 
And I think to sort of almost make the most of it, you've got to land on that and then you get a kind of roll through. But you can feel a bit of the high stack in that midsection and a little bit less under the toes, under the heel. So it's almost like you can feel that kind of shaping of the midsole under there. It's not, not entirely sure I'm, it's, a, it's a sensation I'm a fan of at this kind of pace and the way that I'm moving now. I have run in the Endurus though, moving kind of slightly faster and better on tarmac. And I do like them as a shoe. I think they run great crossover. You know, they're really good on the tarmac as well. To me, they almost felt as good as some road shoes that I've run in on the tarmac when I did that test. But yeah, so far, I think comparisons here, maybe the Endurus feel a little bit ever so slightly heavier to run in. And yeah, the, I don't know, so far the preference here for me has been the Speed Goat 5 still. I think that's still my favorite. Yeah, anyway, two miles to go in this. We'll see if that changes as I get on. I guess the other thing to say, I am now running on slightly more tired legs. My heart rate is up, even at slower paces in these shoes. So that might just be fatigue as I move into the sort of, coming into the, almost the end of the third hour of running. But it also, maybe it's to do with the shoes. We shall see. Coming up to five miles, next shoe change where I'm going into the Innovate Park Claw G280. So the Endurus 2, the North Face Endurus 2, I mean, I've just run a lot quicker actually for this segment. I'm looking down, I've done it that five in about 42 minutes. The other ones took me about an hour. And yeah, main difference is they're firmer than the Tecton X by quite some margin. They're probably not as springy. There's not as much kind of compression of that foam and kind of initial spring. The Tecton X definitely make you feel like you're boing, boing, boing. A little bit more. I mean, it's quite surprising for a trail shoe, I think. They don't tend to have as much of that. And I'm saying something, because when I first put the Endurus on in my last test, I actually thought these were way more springy than many other trail shoes that I've run in in the past. So that's saying something. Uh, I like the Endurus too. They're an easy shoe to roll in. They've done well there. They are slightly firmer. There's probably, I mean, I don't know whether my feet are just feeling a bit more fatigued, but I felt like they put a bit more fatigue into the bottom of the foot though than those earlier shoes. And yeah, they've run okay, but I do, again, I have this question mark over, you know, five, six hours. Is that firmness and that sort of slightly lack of protection gonna become troublesome? Perhaps, but they, you know, they do have good roll. I think the overall comfort on the foot is great. I've had no slipping. The lockdown fit is good. I've had a tiny little bit of rubbing on the outside of my little pinky toes. The toe box doesn't feel kind of narrow and cramped, but it's just the way my kind of toes sit. So if you have that with your feet, kind of wide feet where your toes touch the sides, these might be a little bit narrow compared to the other shoes, but they've run well. They are a good rolling, clipping kind of shoe. And yeah, they're not a million miles away from the speed guard. I'm kind of splitting hairs here. I think the, the shoes I've run in, they've all been pretty solid. Um, still my preference so far, speed goat. Then I think I'm gonna go Tecton and now I'm gonna go in third place. It's gonna be these Endurus now. So yeah, last ones, I'm just gonna have a quick change. We'll do the last five miles home. So I'm now in the Park Claw G280. So you've got this graphene infused midsole that we've saw, seen on the Innovate G300 Max come to a slightly more lightweight shoe. This is again a crossover shoe. It's supposed to be good for kind of road to kind of trail, all of that kind of stuff. One thing I've noticed straight away, it's so much more direct than the other three shoes that I've put on. I believe it's got a lower stack and a lower drop than those other shoes. But yeah, it feels very much flatter on the foot and you could just feel the ground through it more. I mean, I'm much more aware of the sort of the underfoot feel, like I can feel the gravel and the powder of the trail here coming up through that midsole. Not a terrible thing, you know, it's not uncomfortable, but that just tells you the difference. Those other ones you've sort of felt a lot less, or a lot more, so, so the other ones you felt a lot more kind of disconnected to the trails in, the, in a lot of ways. Yeah, so that is, a, that is a noticeable drop in the overall kind of spongy, cushiony sort of softness with these Innovate Park Claw G280s. You know, I'm, I'm kind of on sort of coming into sort of three hour tired legs. I can immediately feel that these shoes perhaps aren't going to be the ones that would carry me 
along the Danube day to day to day. I think I'm going to need a little bit more protection than that. But if you're looking for a trail shoe that's a, a little bit more direct, then this might be it. Anyway, we'll do the miles and I'll do a little bit of a, a wrap when we get to the other end. This is it, we'll take it home now. About five miles to go, say around 40 minutes. So I'm back on the tarmac, making my way out of the forest now. I'm in the Innovate Parklaw G280 for the final stretch. I've been running for about three and a half hours. I think I'm gonna come up about a mile short in these. I've done five miles in all the shoes, apart from these are gonna be four, but I've run out of a bit of time. I've gotta get back and have a shower. My nephew's playing in a cup final. He's 13, it's a massive day for him today. I'm gonna to go and support him. So apologies, but I've had to cut my run short to go and be a proper uncle. Can't wait to see that. Come on, Dars. Um, anyway, back to the shoes. The Parklaw G280. These are a firm shoe, man. I mean, like, they're so noticeably more direct. Back on the tarmac as well. You know, you could just feel, it's they're hard. I mean, compared to those other softer shoes that I've been running in, there is a hardness to these that, yeah, it's not entirely comfortable on the tired legs that I'm on now. I feel like they would do okay when I was on fresh legs running really well. And I have done a sort of quicker mile. I was trying to get back to do a quicker mile, pick up the pace of these. When you're rolling through them with a high cadence, you know, good ground contact, but not, you know, not lingering on the ground, you know, but making them work for you. I think they can run fast. I think they can be a comfortable shoe. You know, those 280 grams, they do feel quite light on the foot. I'm running in a half a size up, which is what was recommended to me by Innovate, because some of the others, like the G300 Max, uh, ran a little bit small. Loads of room in the toe box. I think the overall feel on the foot is pretty comfortable. Maybe not quite as comfortable as the Hoka Speedgoat 5, but you know, it's perfectly comfortable. I think the main difference here is that you're noticing that midsole, and then there's just a lack of spring in it to me. There's a lack of protection. And so I think this is a shoe that I would use, I would need to use when I was running fast, high cadence, running well, and not, you know, what I'm doing now, I'm a bit sort of slow and ponderous, sort of 10, 11 minute miles at the moment, you know, heels and, you know, mid to rear foot running rather than up a little bit. And I, yeah, they're not so great for that. But yeah, there you go. So one more mile to go in these. As ever, I will do a wrap back in the office about how all these shoes have compared. Uh, yeah, but for now, I'm gonna go get this run done, jump in the shower, go and watch some football. So it's the day after I did that 19 mile test run, swapping those four shoes out to see which one of these road to trail crossover trail shoes worked the best for me. And I thought rather than just give you one winner, what I'll do is I'll break this down into some categories that I think are important when you're looking for this kind of shoe. So first up, I wanted to quickly talk about instant stepping comfort, how they feel the minute you put them on. Do they feel natural? Do they feel nice? Do they feel comfortable? By far kind of top of the list came the Speedgoat 5, the most natural on foot of all of the shoes that I tested. Next up were the North Face Vective Endurance 2, I think mainly because of the way the uppers kind of wrapped and held the foot nicely with the kind of decent amount of padding and cushioning that felt good on the foot. Next up got the Hoka Tecton X. There was just a little bit of oddness to the overall kind of fit and feel underfoot on those that kind of dropped them down a list, maybe marked them down. And then finally, I think the Innovate Park Claw G280. Mainly I kind of went half a size up. Overall, they just didn't feel quite as comfortable you know, that, that instinctive kind of feel when I first put them on, it took me a while to sort of settle into them. So they come bottom of this list. Next up, how's that kind of midsole softness underfoot? Now from softness to firmness, by far the softest for me and the most kind of springy were the Hoka Tecton X. Next up, the Hoka Speedgoat 5. Then came the North Face Vective Endurance 2. And finally, the firmest out of the four that I tried were the Innovate Park Claw G280. Now this next category is sort of related to that softness. We're talking about ground contact and how direct each of these shoes felt. By far the most direct, the one that made you feel like you were most in contact with the ground was the Innovate Park Claw G280. So if you like that kind of ride, this shoe is gonna be more for you. Next up, I think the North Face Vective Endurus had the most kind of ground contact Third was the Hoka Speedgoat 5, 
And then fourth, perhaps unsurprisingly because of that carbon plate and the way it interacts with the foam, came the Hoka Tecton X. Next up, we're going to talk about punch. So we're looking at kind of that sort of overall kind of propulsive feel. How much energy are you getting back? How much do they kind of make you feel like they're helping you push forward with each kind of step? And again, unsurprisingly, top of that list were definitely the Hoka Tecton X. The combination of the carbon fiber plate and the foam, I think, really worked well. And these were noticeably more springy, more bouncy, more punchy than any of the other shoes on test. Next up, my preference, the whole thing was kind of the Hoka Speed Goat 5. I felt like they were the shoe that made me kind of run with a little more energy. The North Face Vective Endurus 2 were next on the list. And then finally, with the Innovate Park Claw G280, where I think you basically you're going to have to be like a sort of fast high cadence runner to get the most out of those shoes and your legs are still doing quite a lot of the work. Some people like that and that is fine. I think it's fair to say that all of these shoes I found to be pretty good shoes. They had a solid performance generally. If you're looking at what I think they're best for though, I've broken them down here into a few areas. So for the long and easy rolling, the kind of thing that I'll be doing along the Danube, but very low and slow paces for kind of long days in the saddle, I would definitely be choosing the Hoka Speed Goat 5. They just felt the most natural, I think the most kind of lightweight on the foot, the great balance of cushioning and protection and kind of feeling that kind of rocker geometry go at working underfoot. For shorter and faster road to trail efforts, including races, those kind of things where you may be running for four to five hours on the trails, you know you're gonna be trying to do it at top steam, then I think the Hoka Tecton X definitely have a place, particularly you know when you're gonna be crossing over from the road to trail and this is all based on my experience of running on sort of fairly flat, fairly kind of packed, compacted ground trails rather than anything too steep. Next up, if you're looking for something that gives you a stable and direct ride, the best for that by far is going to be the Innovate Park Claw G280. Final word then, I have to pick a winner out of those four shoes. This is definitely going to be a shoe that I'm going to consider running the Danube. 70 marathons in 70 days, there or thereabouts, trying to cover 2,000 miles along kind of compacted trails, a bit of road, so absolutely looking for a shoe that can handle both tarmac and trail and do that kind of crossover thing. Out of the four shoes that are on test here, the one that fitted the bill most effectively in that test was the Hoka Speed Goat 5. Why? Well, it feels great the minute you put it on the foot. It's almost one of those shoes that I really like where it sort of disappears the moment you put it on. You don't really aware of it it kind of fits nicely there's there's a good kind of balance of padding you know I think it's not overdone it doesn't feel like clumpy and sort of too much shoe even though it is sort of it was like the third heaviest on test but it runs quite light actually there's enough room for me in the toe box so I do believe these come up in a wide as well if you have bigger wider feet I've got kind of quite wide feet but I find that found that fine no rubbing no no problems no hot spots no movement all of those things were bang on for me and then yeah just in terms of that kind of the, the comfort and the protection from underfoot with just a little bit of kind of lightness and, and response and rolling from Hoka's trademark rocker design. I think this one is a shoe that I know that I can put on and just move at very, very easy paces for long, long periods of time. I also feel like it's going to hold up in terms of durability, looking at what I've done in it so far. And for that reason, this one at the moment is firmly in contention to be my Danube River Run shoe. And I think if you're looking for a road to trail crossover shoe for exactly the kind of runs that I've described, then this is the one that I would recommend. So there you have it. That's been my four road to trail crossover shoe run test. Now I haven't gone into all the detail about the foams and the plates and the design and all of those features in this video for each of the shoes because I felt like that might end up being too long a video. If you'd like to have all of that detail, I'll be happy to create another video that goes into that stuff and compares these shoes kind of side by side. So let me know in the comments below if that would be useful or you think that stuff is missing from this review. But I just wanted to give you an experience of how the shoes felt as I was running in them and sort of take you out there with me as much as possible. So I hope that's been really useful. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, if you want to see more of this content. Again, ask me questions in the comments if you want to know any of the details. We'd be happy to answer those. It's been a pleasure to talk to you and I hope to see you again soon on the channel. Thanks for watching.